Hi everyone, Jamie Humphries here for Six String Alliance. And today, one of the tallest guitar players in the industry is playing an incredibly small guitar. Yes, we are taking a look at the Black Star Carry On guitar. So before we get into today's full demo, I kind of owe Black Star a bit of a, an apology or not, however you want to look at this. Um, I've had this guitar since February and I haven't done my video yet. I've had it for months and uh, I did feel a little bit bad about that at first. I wasn't being lazy. I don't stop working. I didn't push it to the back of the queue, uh, get other things in and think, oh, that can wait. This is the first product that I've had that I have not stopped using. So uh, I think in some ways it's really worked in favor when it comes to this demo. Blackstar State on their uh, website when you're looking at the info about this guitar, that it's completely portable guitar that feels like a full-size electric guitar that you can perform on, you can practice on, you can songwrite on. And it does exactly that. I absolutely love this instrument. I have used it extensively at home as a practice guitar. My studio is not at, um, at my home. My studio is in a different location. And uh, I don't always like to be carrying guitars home with me. I wanted something small that I could just tuck away in a cupboard, take out and do some practice. And this has really filled that void. I play a lot more guitar at home since I got this guitar. The look and size of this guitar has also encouraged my five-year-old daughter to start playing. She was playing anyway, holding my regular full-size guitars and playing those. As soon as she picked this guitar up, she is now playing songs and singing songs, which is incredible to see. On top of that, we go up to the north of Sweden and uh, we go up to the cabin there in the summer. I'm always, oh, can we squeeze a guitar in the back so I can do some practice? Just took this with me. I went out to Germany and traveled. I needed a practice guitar. I needed to be able to work on tunes that I was doing for another project. Although I was at a guitar event, I didn't want to take guitars home. Oh, can I borrow that guitar? Where's the case for it? I just thought, I'll take my travel guitar. I walked onto the airplane with it. And for the first time in many years, I didn't get funny looks 
from the uh, flight attendants for taking the guitar. It feels great. It plays great. It sounds great. The intro demo track that you've seen me perform, that was written on this guitar. All the backing track guitar parts were recorded on this guitar. This is a fantastic small solution uh, if you're looking for a practice and travel guitar. I'll be taking this on tour next year. This will be my bus and dressing room guitar. I absolutely love it. So although I owe Blackstar a slight apology for uh, being maybe taking my time with this demo, it really has given me the opportunity to use this instrument and give you an accurate account of my thoughts of it and also how the instrument has stood up to being used and chucked in the back of the car, put in an overhead compartment on a plane. So first of all, when it comes to travel guitars, this is the first travel guitar I've had and uh, there are certain compromises that have been made with it. When you look at other travel guitars, you can get ones that the necks fold up on them or they've got big lumps missing out the body. Uh, this one's got obviously got quite a small size body and the scale length as well is shorter. It's only got 19 frets, which I posted a photo of this a while ago when I first got it. And a few comments were like, what are you going to do with that? And to be honest with you, you know, for what I've been using it for, it hasn't been a problem to me. So you are going to encounter certain compromises when you're choosing a guitar like this. But if you are someone that travels a lot or needs a, a space-saving instrument at home, then I really would urge you to take a closer look at this guitar. Like I said, I th I, the neck feels fantastic on it. I don't feel like I'm playing a small guitar. Obviously, the body's small. If it's on on your leg, it can be a bit awkward, but you get this, uh, the, the strap comes with it. So I normally just put it on the strap and uh, put my, my boss headphones on and away I go. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to get into the whole thing about travel guitars. I don't really know enough about it or have explored them. But at, at one point before I got this guitar, I was seriously considering other options. I was even looking at a headless guitar, something small. But the thing is, I think when you get other guitars, other travel guitars that have got maybe more full-size bodies, again, it's making the whole package a little bit bigger. This thing is absolutely tiny and functions as good as uh, uh, as as a full size guitar. So let's talk a little bit about the construction. I'm going to try and get all the woods correct. If I just actually take this uh, take the guitar off, look at that. This guitar was designed in conjunction with the luthiers at Gordon Smith. So it was designed in the UK, and uh, it has a real kind of high end sort of luthier feel about the guitar. I don't feel like I'm playing a cheap little guitar. Uh, the body, I'm not much of a cork sniffer. I always use that term. I believe the wood is called Akumi or Akume. That's, that's the name of the wood. Uh, it's a one piece body and also it's a one piece Akume neck as well. And, uh, it's a glued on neck, a really beautiful neck joint on it. There's no, no rough sort of join there whatsoever. It doesn't feel like I'm playing a, uh, you know, a, a kind of, budget-friendly uh, uh, travel instrument. Um, it's got, uh, obviously this is finished in black. Let's <laughs> uh, state the obvious. They do two different finishes. They do a white finish as well. You've got 19 frets. The fretboard is laurel. Uh, I'd never come across that wood before. I must admit, again, maybe it's because I'm a snob and uh, I always play my posh Maple Neck Music Mans and I, I don't as I said, I'm not much of a cork snipper, but uh, the, the fretboard is laurel, beautifully edge bound. We've got the edge binding on the neck and on the body and uh, the machine heads, really good quality machine heads, no play on those whatsoever. And then we have the, the strings are going through the body. So once again, lots of sustain and you get that real kind of connection with the, with the, the, uh, the strings to the wood. Uh, the, the single bridge piece, if you want to adjust the, uh, the action, just these little wheels. We have a mini humbucker, which is a great sounding pickup, plenty of crunch to it, but also you pull up the volume co uh, control and, uh, we've got coil tap on there as well. And then we have a tone control, little scratch play on it. And, um, yeah, that's basically the layout of the guitar. It, it's, uh, I, can, I, can, I kind of think it's pretty sort of, uh, acute looking. Now, just one other thing I want to mention, uh, when it comes to the kind of working of the guitar, the truss rod adjuster is here. Now I've got a lot of Music Man guitars and I've also got 
some EVH guitars, all of which have this wheel. I'm always hunting around for an Allen key or a screwdriver that will push into that hole. Blackstar give you this little tool here. I don't know if you can see that. Genius little tool. Looks like a little whammy bar, but that literally just slots in there and enables you to adjust the wheel if you need to tweak the neck at all. I haven't really done much uh, tweaking with it. It's been very, very solid. In terms of tuning, um, yeah, the only string that sounds a bit weird is the G string on this guitar, but then I don't actually think that's the guitar's fault. I think that's the, the thickness of the strings. This guitar is designed to take uh, 12 through to 53 four gauge strings. So you put a heavier set of gauge strings on and with the scale length, the um, the tension will feel like you're playing a regular guitar. So I've noticed in the past, I've actually changed the strings on this guitar a few times. I'm using the beefy slinkies, the Cobalts, which is an 11 through to 54. So I've gone a little bit lighter, but I still always find that that G string, even when I put it on my Music Man guitars, it seems to, it sounds a little bit flat, sounds a little bit dead. You could hear how well the guitar performed in the intro demo. You know, you're getting up onto those top strings and it's it's really starting to sing. That string, I, I might experiment with a lower gauge, but I don't, I'm, I'm not putting that down to the guitar. I have used a bit of nut sauce on the nut. I did have a, a couple of uh, tuning issues with it early on. I don't know whether the strings weren't stretched in, but I put a little bit of nut sauce on there. And again, as you saw in the intro, I'm bending strings and playing it uh, with a, a certain amount of conviction and uh, it performs really well. I have one slight gripe. I do want this to be honest. Um, on the back of the guitar, actually, you can see it's got a dent in it already. Uh, it has been travelled. So, uh, yeah. Um, on the back here, we've got these little sort of barrels here that fit in where we put the strings through. They fall out. They didn't at first. So, um, you know, it's a little bit annoying when I restring. They're always dropping out. That's my only negative thing about this guitar, I think, uh, um, yeah, it, it plays great and it sounds great. So now let's have a listen to the guitar. Uh, obviously you heard it uh, playing some different uh, driven tones during the introduction, but just let's have a listen to some isolated tones. I have mentioned about scale length a couple of times, but I haven't actually told you yet. It's a 20.7 inch scale length on this guitar. So yes, it is a shorter scale length. It is 19 frets but there's always gonna be compromises with a guitar of this nature. Now, to just give you a little brief bit of history, I've known the Black Star guys since 2008. I was an endorsee of Black Star for many, many years, all through the Brian May period of my career. I was using Black Star, all the champions of rock tours. I was using Black Star uh, here in Sweden before I moved here. And at one point, I actually even worked for Black Star as their product specialist. My friend Steve Marks does that job now. And as I've said before in another Black Star demo I've done on the channel, he does a much better job than me. I was not suited to a real job. But um, the guys are like family to me. I've known them all for years and uh, I still have a lot of Black Star gear in my collection. So for today, I am plugged into my HT5. Now I have an original HT5. This is actually an HT5R, but this is the prototype. This is serial number one. It's sort of written on the back with Sharpie and the, uh, the gain structure of this amp is actually different to the one that was released. This is, there were, there were two prototypes and this one was really hot and, uh, they let me hold on to it. So I've got a little bit of Black Star history sitting next to me. I'm plugged into a two notes captor, just the regular captor, and I'm using Wall of Sound. And I'm currently using the Van Halen, the VH Lynch cab. I'm just using the one with the, I think it's got green backs in. I think there are two cabs. I'm not using the JBL one. So let's kick things off by having a listen to some clean tones. Just going to play some uh, some some chords just to give you an idea of how it sounds. We can also pop up the volume control and split the coil.
And if you feel that the sound of the guitar is a little bit too bright uh, for playing chords, as soon as you've only got a single bridge pickup, of course you can uh, back down the tone control a little bit, back down the volume of the guitar. So you still get a nice clean tone out of it, even though we just have a single humbucker in the bridge. I can play bar chords. So, uh, you know, obviously, as I said, there's going to be compromises. It's a travel guitar, but I can still get my hand in. That's quite impressive on the intonation front. So now I've kicked over to the second channel, the high gain channel on my HT5R. And uh, as I said, my one has unfeasible amounts of gain. It's actually quite ridiculous. Let's have a listen. <laughs> Pretty impressive. That pickup sounds absolutely fantastic. Okay, so I backed the gain down a bit. So much gain from this amp. I think my gain control is on about seven o'clock. A little bit more of a maybe classic. For those of you into uh, maybe a little bit more of a, of a blues rock, hard rock sound as opposed to a metal-y sound, let's pop up the, uh, the coil tap. This sounds fantastic. If I, uh, if I push the gain controller. Yeah, what more do you want? Uh, it's, uh, it's got a lot going on, I think, tonally. Uh, it's a small guitar with a big sound. For lead playing as well, guitar feels great. Uh, just the game with everything turned up on full. You sometimes have to watch your string bends uh, for uh, the kind of, uh, due to the scale length, obviously, when you're bending, it's quite easy to overbend. But having the uh, the thicker strings does help. And obviously, if I want to get a slightly creamier sound, I can back the tone control down uh, slightly as well. You know, also uh, splitting the uh, the coil. Yeah, it's a very, very usable and workable guitar if you want something for traveling and practicing with. Wonders of video editing. I'm now holding lots of stuff. And uh, yeah, there's three different packages. That's what I was going to say. We have the basic package, which is just the guitar and the gig bag. We should be seeing the gig bag round about now. It's a fantastic gig bag. Lots of package, uh, pockets, packets, pockets, lots of pockets for putting odds and sods in, stuff that guitar players like to carry, leads, headphones, whatever you need for your practice, iPad, etc. I've put it in the car and traveled. I've had it on my back on the train. I've taken it on an aeroplane. That gig bag has not broken. All the zips still work. The straps are solid. It's a really good case. Uh, the second package is the one that I've got. We've got this nice black star pen. It's very nice. Thank you for that. And we have the little, uh, the fly uh, plug in, what's that? The amp plug too. These are great sounding little uh, practice tools. I must admit, I've got a set of Boss wireless headphones, which I use. This with those is a fantastic combination, but obviously Blackstar have their own uh, practice tool, practice uh, personal amplifier. So this has got four different types of tones on it. Uh, that you've got clean and crunch and, and lead and, and whatnot. Yeah, clean, crunch, 
lead. Oh, it's three. Cl- clean crunch and lead channel. Sorry, not four. And plus we got some different effects, reverb and chorus and delay. And it's also got ISF as well, which is like their tone shaping tool, the infinite shape feature. So, you know, plug your guitar into that, plug your headphones in and off you go. I personally like the little headphones that I use because you've got the Bluetooth plug the headphones and the guitar and, you know, I could go and practice in the bathroom if I want to get away from everyone. And as I said, when we were up in the cabin, I was sitting in the forest getting away from uh, from from the family, having a bit of me time. Uh, we got some guitar picks and uh, we all know what guitar picks look like. We don't need to see those. And then we have this nice book, which is lovely. It's a nice little bound notebook, the Black Star notebook. So if you want to write down your practice routines or Whatever, whatever you need a notepad for. And then there's the third package, which comes with, um, the little fly amplifiers. I've got, I've got one of those over there, actually. They're really good. So, uh, there you have it. The Black Star carry on guitar. I absolutely love this guitar. Uh, again, apologies to Black Star for taking so long, but. I was using it and I really have used it. It's got wear marks. It's got a dent. It's been well used and it will continue to be well used. In fact, I'll probably be phoning Joel up at Blackstar to get another one because my daughter's stolen this one from me. Uh, It's great that it's encouraged my little one to want to start practicing and playing the guitar. If you're looking for something, a stocking filler for Christmas and you're running out of ideas, this is a great thing. You can just have it laying around the house, pick it up, do some practice, do some recording, do some writing, be creative, take it with you to work, take it with you on holiday. So there you go, guys. Click the link in the description below for more information. And uh, yeah, there you are. Blackstar Carry On Travel Guitar. Hope you enjoyed the video. Look forward to seeing you very soon. Bye for now.